I've been roofing now for nearly 10 years. I make a good living and I enjoy doing quality work. But there's no doubt about it, this is dangerous work. Just when you think nothing can go wrong, it will. Twice I've taken a tumble and if it weren't for being properly tied off, I probably wouldn't be working today. I love my family and I want to return home safe at night. Working safe doesn't take long. You don't have to sacrifice safety to do quality work and make a profit. This video is dedicated to the residential construction workforce. Its intent is to help provide employees and employers with the tools to make the residential workplace productive and safe. This video is one in a series on residential construction. It provides examples of ways to meet safety requirements. In addition to the safety requirements reviewed in this video, there are a number of other safety-related requirements that employers must follow in order to provide a safe workplace for employees. For example, the construction employer is required to provide a safety program tailored to the operation and types of hazards involved, safety meetings to address the needs and safety of the job, first aid training and kits, a portable kit for transient or short duration jobs, and personal protective equipment necessary to do the job safely. If you need help with these or any other matters related to workplace safety and health, or if you need a copy of the safety standards for construction work, please contact your local Labor and Industries office. This video outlines a number of code requirements and will show how to work safely during the roofing phase of residential construction. The areas to be discussed are job prep, walk around safety inspection, ladder safety, safe access, anchorages, roofing and job completion. On-the-job safety is a joint effort of the employer and workers and requires cooperation between employers and workers. Planning for safety will increase the efficiency and profitability of the job. Preparing for this job involves reviewing the work order, the warning signs to post, and the site-specific fall protection work plans. Before you leave for the job site, have all the tools and materials necessary to complete the job. Make sure your fall protection equipment is not damaged and all the components are there. Upon arriving at the site, include as part of the walk-around safety inspection the safety and location of other workers on the site. Evaluate safe access to your work area, including the location of trenches, excavations, construction debris, and tripping slipping hazards. Look for any unprotected openings in the roof. Determine a safe and convenient area for dropping roof debris. If permanent anchors have been installed, check that they have been properly installed. This is one that is not properly installed. It is missing a lower block. Document the inspection and get any deficiencies corrected. The fall protection work plan addresses the method of overhead protection for anyone in and around the area. Informing others on the site about the overhead work being performed is necessary. Coordinate correction of the deficiencies noted during the walk around safety inspection. Make sure slipping and tripping hazards are eliminated in your work area. Posting signs helps to warn others that could come into the area. An improperly installed anchor can put you at risk.
coordinate any corrections with the appropriate person. If you're not sure that an anchor is installed properly or if no one is available to make the correction, install a temporary anchor. Ladder safety is one of the most important areas of roofing safety. Make sure to carefully plan access to and from the roof. Setting up the ladder is the first step. Select the best location for placing the ladder. Be aware of soft ground areas, slippery surfaces, and overhead lines. Place the ladder in a location where it will help provide the safest access for the roofer to safely tie off. In some cases, the ladder can be placed directly below the anchor to serve as a barrier until the roofer is safely tied off. Check the base of the ladder. The ladder base should be free of debris. The ladder must only be used on stable and level surfaces and not be placed on soft ground. The angle of the ladder should be a 1 to 4 ratio. The ladder is required to extend at least three feet above the working surface so the worker has something to grasp for balance while getting on and off the ladder. The areas at the top and bottom of the ladder must be kept clear of materials and debris. Secure the ladder to prevent movement or accidental displacement. There are different ways to secure the bottom of the ladder. One way is to dig holes for the base of the ladder to sit in. Another way would be to drive stakes near the base of the ladder and secure the side rails to the stakes. If a ladder is used inside on a wood floor, then blocking nailed to the floor will help prevent the ladder from slipping. The rungs of the ladder should be kept free of mud and oil to prevent slipping while climbing the ladder. This will also keep the roof free from mud and debris. The top of the ladder must also be secure. After gaining access to the roof, go directly to the anchor and immediately tie off. If permanent anchors have not been installed, install temporary anchors as described in the fall protection work plan. Be sure to follow manufacturer's recommendations. If the safety rope is the adjustable type, be sure to adjust the length so you have only the length needed to do the work safely. Move unused portions of safety ropes or lines to an area that does not create a tripping hazard. Each worker needs to be adequately protected from falling. Additional safety ropes can be attached by the worker who is already protected and then placed so other workers can tie off before getting on the roof. Select the proper length of rope for the job and adjust the rope grab. Tie a limiter knot to act as a stop for the rope grab to prevent falling off the roof edge. The limiter knot should be tied high enough to allow for the length of the lanyard. Your choice of fall protection equipment is not limited to the equipment shown in this video. Alternative equipment is also available from a variety of sources. Whatever equipment you use, always refer to the manufacturer's instructions for installation and proper use. If there are any openings, such as skylights or chimney shafts, they need to be guarded with standard guardrails or securely covered and marked. Once the felt is laid, caution should be used when walking to prevent tearing and slipping. Workers should not carry tools and materials while on the ladder in order to keep both hands free for climbing. Any additional tools or supplies needed should be transported to the work area safely. When working with sheet metal, use proper gloves. 
When using cutting tools, cut away from yourself and use a hard, stable surface. When using a pneumatic nailer, protective eye protection must be worn. It is important to be aware of the safety of other workers below. The predetermined area for a dropping roof debris needs to be clearly marked and away from high traffic areas. Before clearing the roof of scraps and debris, visually check the drop zone area and announce your intentions before tossing materials off of the roof. After the roof is complete, only one worker is needed to finish the job. Any additional workers exiting the roof can remain connected to their lifeline until safely on the ladder. The remaining worker can disconnect all other lifelines and transport the lifelines and any remaining tools off the work area safely. The last thing to do is disconnect your lifeline and go directly to the ladder to safely exit the roof. Keep both hands free for climbing. Inspect all the fall protection gear for any damage and store it in a protected container. This video has provided examples of how to work safely while working in residential roofing. There are a number of ways to accomplish this. This video provided some examples. The video discussed job prep, walk around safety inspection, ladder safety, safe access, anchorages, roofing, and job completion. If you have additional questions or need individual help, call your local l and office. This video is a project of the Construction Advisory Committee, which is made up of representatives from Labor, Management, and the Department of Labor and Industries. The purpose of the CAC is to promote workplace safety and health in the construction field in Washington State.